I'm back, back again for another podcast. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Study Knits. My name is Allie. If you're new here, I'm a medical student. I'm living in the United States. And this is podcast number two. Lots of new things. If you can tell, I'm in a new place. So I moved. In my last video, I talked a little bit about it. I was like going through my staff, deciding what to take with me and what to put into storage. So I moved pretty kind of far away, like from one side of the East Coast to the other side of the East Coast. I've moved in with my boyfriend. We lived together during my first years of med school and then did long distance last year. And now we're back living together. I brought my cat Agnes, so she's here somewhere. And in addition, there's also another cat that might be around. And we also have a, a highly reactive dog. Her name's Mary Jane Watson. So she might... No, she will bark. I had to refilm the intro because she started barking at someone outside. So she will bark or come join me on the couch at some point. So lots of changes, lots of exciting changes. I'm very happy, very happy to be back. I'm living closer to my mom, living with my dog again, with my boyfriend. So it's very exciting. It's also a lot warmer. It's a lot warmer here. I didn't get really a jump start on my summer knits, which was maybe a mistake. So now I have to crank out some new summer knits to start wearing them because there's about a 10 to 20 degree Fahrenheit difference between where I was living before and where I am now. Don't get me wrong. It's lovely. I've been able to like sit outside comfortably and like tan. It's been very nice. What else is new? I brought some of my plants with me. I'm a big plant person. I don't think I've talked about this before. I've just recently become a plant girl in the past year. I love it. So I brought my one of my Monsteras with me when I moved. I only moved down in my little sedan. So I packed up all of my things in my sedan. And then my mom drove down with me, which was very nice because it was a two day drive and I didn't really want to do it by myself. So shout out to her for doing that with me. So I couldn't take all of my plants with me. So one of my friends is keeping my plants for a while. She's like plant sitting them. She's a really good with plants. So she's keeping them for a while, but I brought some of them with me. I brought my one of my Monsteras and I was nervous about how she would do in a new apartment. And she has a new leaf. So she's adjusting very well. I've only been here for about a week and a half and she's popping out a new leaf. So I'm very happy. The Monstera, her name is Stassi from Vanderpump rules. If you're a Bravo person, I thought it was very fitting. She's very out there. If she could talk, she would be opinionated. So she has a new leaf. So I'm very excited that she's adapting well to the new environment. So that's very nice. That was very exciting when I saw that the other night. What else is new? Lando Norris won his first race. So that's incredible. I'm also a big Formula One girl. Very exciting to see. Didn't Honestly, I was doubting if it was ever going to happen. I don't know about anybody else. Everybody kept saying, you know, it wasn't a matter of like if, but when, but for, for me, it was getting to a matter of if. Like, is it really going to happen? So I thought it was a good race and I thought he won it all on his own. So congrats to Lando. I feel like there's actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there's a ton of like knitting and Formula One crossover. Maybe that's just because there's a lot of knitting in Europe and F1 is big in Europe. But I think that's cool. I love on like race day seeing people post what they're working on like while watching the race. I think it's fun. It's a really good knitting activity too. You just sit there and you just watch cars go around and sometimes interesting things happen and you can just get some good time in on your whips. So what else is new? I watched anyone but you last night on Netflix with Sydney Sweeney and Glenn Powell. My mom recommended it. She said she loved it. So I watched that and then halfway through, I was like, is this a modern day adaptation of Much Ado About Nothing? When the brother and the stepdad were gossiping in the garden trying to be overheard. And I was like, this is straight out of Much Ado About Nothing. And then I was like, Beatrice and Benedict, of course this is a much to do about nothing modern day adaptation. And my interest level in the movie skyrocketed. In addition to yarn and plants and Formula One, one of my other greatest loves in this world is modern day adaptations of classic pieces of literature. Name one that isn't iconic and isn't good. Clueless, 10 Things I Hate About You, She's the Man, 
how can you not love She's the Man? And then I'm watching this and I was like, oh my God, it's much ado about nothing. Incredible. That's what else is new. I feel like I'm rambling now. Did I ramble too much? Okay, I'll start talking about knitting now. I have two, two-ish finished objects. Two and a half. No, two and a quarter finished objects to talk about. A bunch of whips that I've just started and then a couple of acquisitions. So let's just hop in. My first finished object, I don't know if you recognize it. This is the Ghost Whisperer Top by Park Williams from Park and Knit. I finished it a couple of days ago and I blocked it. It's knit with one strand of Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in Cloud. I used a six and a half millimeter needle for it for most of it. I really like it. If I'm being honest with you guys, this is my first time wearing it because I blocked it yesterday and I'm just putting it on and I wanted to wear it and see how it felt. Here, I don't know if you can see, the sleeves are puffy. I made them, I think for my recommended size, they said to make the sleeves 25 centimeters long before making working the cuff and I did 30 centimeters on accident, but then I liked it. So they kind of hit just below the elbows. They're very poofy. They give you an option in the pattern. You can either work an I-cord edge for the sleeves or one by one rib. And I did the rib because I thought it looked more sleeve-like. It's nice. It The sleeve, when I tried it on after blocking it, the rib was like tight on my elbows like it would normally be for, for a garment. And it loosened up up a lot after blocking the neckline is kind of gaping a little bit more and the sleeves the cuff for the sleeves is definitely stretched out but i still like it this is the thing that i was worried about when i was making this i used some stashed yarn for this and it looked really fun and i'm glad i knit it it was fun to knit i'm sweating wearing this right now and i only have like a little bralette on underneath this and i i'm like sweating so I think this is a bit too hot for late spring, early summer, which sounds kind of obvious now that I say it because it, it's it's mohair. It's not, it's a warm fiber. So forgive me for stating the obvious, but I was like, maybe because there's so many holes in it, I can get away with wearing it in warmer temperatures. And that's just not the case. I had to turn the AC down when I put this on and was getting ready to film because I was getting a little toasty and I am sweaty in this. So I think this is a good, this is a good solid spring garment. I don't think, I think it's a bit too, it's not warm enough to wear in the winter, but I think it's perfect for the spring. So next spring, I'll bust it out. And the soft silk mohair knitting for olive is very soft. This isn't itchy at all. It's not really irritating me. It's not irritating my skin. I'm glad I picked that fiber for it. I actually have enough left in my stash to make another one. I'm not going to make one for myself. Why would I make two of the exact same garment for myself? But maybe I'll make something, something for another person, or maybe I'll just save it. Ghost Whisperer Top. I think I used about two and a half skeins for this. A good amount, honestly. It was relatively quick. I did put this aside for a lot of other projects. So all in all, I think it took me about two months to knit, maybe three. What does it say on Ravelry? Exactly two months to knit because I kept putting it aside for other projects, but nothing much else to say about it. The Ghost Whisperer Top, everyone. Do I look like a slutty little spirit now? Because that was my main draw for this. My next finished object, I knitted up so fast that I didn't even, Mary, don't yell. You don't need to yell. Mary. Come say hi. Can you guys see this is Mary? Her name is Mary Jane Watson, like from Spider-Man. She has little red hair. She's the best dog in the world, just like your dog. Everybody's dog is the best dog in the world. My next finished object, I was so speedy with knitting this up that I didn't even have time to talk about it as a whip in my last podcast. This is the, this is the Strata Top by Jacqueline Sisnick. I love this. This is, this was knit as a gift for a friend, so it will not be staying with me. It is also not my size, so I will not be putting it on for you guys. It's, it would be too small for me. Would not do it justice. I knit this using some stashed yarn. I talked about it in my last video, but this was knit with Kotlin from Knit Picks in the color Sagebrush. I used a little over three skeins for it. I knit one for myself last year, also using Kotlin. I love this top. I love all of Jacqueline's next patterns. I think they're like, they're really good. They're really easy to customize for your own body and gives really, really good detailed instructions on how to customize them. This one's really cool because you can work some bust darts which are basically just like 
short rows like here where your boobs would go and it basically allows like extra fabric over your boobs so that if you put the top on it sits the hem is like even at the end so you basically just work extra fabric in the front so that it accounts for how big your boobs are so that it sits flat so it's like so nice so it has ways that you you measure all these different measurements you take and then you figure out how many short rows to work and for how long and it's very very like detailed and thorough for that. So I really appreciate how customizable this is. I bound off, I did this, I did the same thing when I made mine for myself last year. I bound off way too tight on the armholes. I didn't work a stretchy bind off. So it's like, there's like not much give, but I think it's fine. I had, I, I yeah, I think, I think it's fine. But if you were to work this the next time I make one of these, I think I might make more. They're, they're really cute. They're comfy. They're, they're, just, they're easy to crank out and they're just fun to make. But the next time I make it, I would definitely work like a stretchy bind off for the armholes, maybe for the neck as well. And it's got this fun um, knit three pearl one rib. I don't know if you can see. That makes it look, it's just a fun, it's a more fun version of a rib in my opinion. The only modifications I worked for my other one, the pattern recommends when you are working increases for the V-neck and the armhole. There's only one selvage stitch at the end and then you work the increases and when I was going to pick up stitches to make the ribbing for the armhole and the neck. It ended up picking up really weird and there was some weird gapping in it. So with this one, instead of having one selvage stitch and then working the increases, I had two stitches and then would work increases. It worked out well. You can see, where can you see it best? You can probably see it best on the neck right here. So you can see there ends up being like one column that ends up going falling all the way down. I think next time if I made this, I would do three. So it looks more traditional. I like the way that looks better when you knit like a vest or something, and then you end up having the kind of line of stitches that separate where the ribbing is worked from from where the increases are. I like the way that looks. Actually, I brought my other strata with me when I moved. Let me just, let me just go get it. Okay, I'm back. So this is mine that I made last year for myself. This is a uh, Kotlin in cashew. So you can see on mine, there's no like line, there's no like column that follows the neck ribbing. But if you look, I don't know, this, this kind of bugs me because it's me and I'm the one that made it. But I feel like it looks, if you look right there, I feel like it looks kind of like stepwise. It looks chunky. You can tell where the increases were and you can tell like, for me, I can tell there, you know, I worked three rows and then didn't increase. And then I worked three rows and didn't increase. And I feel like mine looks a little clunky like that. And I don't, I don't love the way that it looks around the neck edge. So when I made this one, we can go back and compare. When I made this one, I added an extra selvage to show. And if I were to make it again, I would also add another one or maybe add two more so that there's three selvage stitches and then like three stitches and then you work the increase. I like through that looks better. That was really the only modification I did with this. And I hold them up together. Little stratas. They're so cute. They're so fun. So that, that ends my two formal finished objects. This is my now like quarter finished object. If you remember last time I talked about, I bought the Surella yarn in my Chiefs era sock set that was a one day only pre-sale the day of the Super Bowl for the Chiefs. So I talked about making some socks and I did, I made a whole sock. This is the basic sock and light by Suzanne Muller from Paul Street. I love the way it looks. It's cool. I added this, um, you know, just for fun, just, just to be a little fun, but it's great. It's got ribbing on the front. And then I love the way this looks on the side. The stripes are so cool. It's really, it's too big for me. This is, um, uh, this is massive. My feet aren't that big. You don't get to see my feet. It's not that kind of video. So if that's what you're here for, you can just click out of it. Sorry to disappoint. So this is too big. And so I was like, well, do I remake it or do I just have two really big socks? And then one of my friends was like, oh, you could just make it and give it to somebody else. And I was like, no, no one else will understand. No one else will appreciate in my Chiefs era, single day only pre-sale, 
like I will, I want these socks. I need them. So I decided to just, I think I went down one size. Um, so this, I just started it. It's a toe up sock. I've never made a toe up sock before. I quite like it. I think it's, I think it's fun. This pattern, I love the way it looks. It's kind of difficult to, to follow. When you're reading the pattern, the instructions are only given for one size. And that can be confusing for someone who has a hard time following instructions like me. A couple of times I found myself making this and I would read the instructions for the wrong size. Like just the size that was the one size that the instructions were given for, that's what I would read and that's what I would do. But after every couple of steps, there's a table for all of the sizes and the instructions. Well, it's just difficult to follow. Luckily, I made the size either, I either went down one or two sizes from this. Either way, I just settled on the size that has the instructions listed in the pattern and written out with the pattern, partially because I thought that it would fit my feet and then partially because I'm just lazy at my core. This is why it is my one quarter finished object because like I technically finished half of it, but it's wrong. So I still get like some validation. I still get some points for finishing it, but it's not a full finished object. It's not even a half finished object because I am going to unravel this. So I've just been kind of picking this up and working on it when I want something simple or mindless to do. So this will probably take me a while to finish. And yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like let it be a slow whip. Like it's it's in my work bag. So that if I have downtime there anywhere, I'll just pull it out, just a couple of rows, call it a day. Just for full transparency, I didn't gauge swatch prior to this. So kind of my fault. I feel like my gauge was probably off. Like that's the best explanation. I feel like, so it was a high risk, high reward situation, not gauge watching and I'm paying the price, but I'm not really complaining about it. So, and if I'm being honest with you guys, I would do it again. I feel like I should probably swatch for socks, but I've never swatched for a sock in my life, nor will I ever swatch for a sock. What's next? I talked about this in my stash busting video. This is the very, very beginning stages. Oh, it's tangled. Okay, I untangled it. This is the very beginning of the Boat Neck Batwing top by James and Watts. It's a lace top. It's very scrunched up now. I'm using this Rowan Cable Mercerized Cotton. I don't even know what Mercerized means. Someone tell me. I've had this in my stash for a couple of years now. It was gifted to me by a family friend. I didn't really know what to do with it because it is, as the name implies, cabled. I don't know if you can tell. It's very soft, but it's kind of, it's very ropey. It's very cabled. So I tried, I started to knit a garment with it last year and I was like feeling the beginning part of it. And I was like, this isn't, I'm, I know right now this is not going to like drape nicely as a garment. I was just searching on Ravelry looking for like a swimsuit cover up type of pattern. I couldn't find a knitted dress version that I liked and I didn't want to crochet one because I don't know how to crochet. So I found this top, the boat net back wing, and I thought it was cute. And then I'm also planning on making a matching, a matching skirt to go with it. The lime skirt by LaPoll in the same yarn because I have a lot of this. So this is, it's been fun to make. I never really make much lace. Why? Because I don't love the way, I just never see myself wearing a lace pattern, but this isn't really lace. It's more like fishnet. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's already kind of, it's already kind of fishnetty. The fishnet is fishnetting. It's been very fun to make. I have finally gotten the hang of it. There's also nothing more exciting not more exciting. It's so exciting to cast on something with a stash yarn that you've had for a while that you're like actually excited about. Cause I feel like a lot of times I, I'm using stash yarn just to use it just because it's been there for a while and I need to use it. So I'm really glad that I am making something with this that's been there for a while. Something that I'm like really excited about, but I feel like I will get a lot of wear out of it. So I'm just very excited to make this. It's, it's just been fun to make so far. I did make the mistake of thinking that this would knit up quickly because if you look at the picture I'm like oh there's not much like knitting involved there's a lot of holes in it so how long could it take 
a long time. Lace takes a long time. Do you need something? It's it's nice to make. I'm not very far into it. So I have a beach trip coming up in about two months. So I just want to have it finished by the time I go to the beach. So that gives me a lot of time. I don't know what else to say about that. My last whip of the day. Very small. There's not much to look at here. It's not much, but it's something. <laughs> I started this literally last night. This is the Twist Loop Top by Other Loops. Can you see the vision yet? I always know when I've gotten somewhere with a, a garment when I can hold it up to my boyfriend and he can see what it's going to be. Like I can tell right now what this is. This is the left, this is the left shoulder. And then this is, this right here is gonna be the right shoulder. But when like a non-knitter, when you can hold it up to them and they can they can know immediately what it's going to be, that's when you're like almost there with the project. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I started this last night. This is knit with Knitting for Olive Merino in Cloud. I, I've been wanting to make this top for so long. I, I actually, now that I think about it, I started it last summer using the Rowan cable mercerized cotton. I was knitting with it and I was like, it's not looking, it's not looking right. You could like see every little bit of the increases and decreases. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't it. And so then I just stopped. I got probably this far with it. And I was like, I don't, I don't think this is gonna be it. So I've been wanting to make this for a while. So I bought some of Knitting for Olive Merino, which is like my favorite yarn ever. Bury me with it. I love it. I was debating what color to make with this. I was going back and forth. I was like, do I want a black one? Do I want a brown one? Like I couldn't decide. And then I was, I just decided to do a simple white one. I thought that would show off the ribbing really well. I thought it would show off the cables really well. So I'm very excited. I think this will be time consuming. So I started it now. I also, I put up a poll on my Instagram if I should start this or another one first. And this was overwhelmingly voted for this one. So I love all of the other loops patterns. I, they look so like chic, but also comfy. They, they seem like the perfect, like sweaters and garments that you could wear lounging around the house, but also like dress up and elevate. I just love them all. I think they're so beautiful, but I've never made any of them. So this is the first one that I've made and I'm so excited about it. Probably my first finished object of the summer, of like the summer tops. And I'm for myself, this is for me. And I'm so excited about this. When I first started knitting, I bought the Clover Takumi interchangeable needle set, which was such a good investment, but I haven't bought a lace needle set. So I keep having to buy lace needles <laughs> as I need them. And I'm always so surprised. Like I went to, I gauge swatch for this surprise. It's 50, 50 on if I gauge swatch for anything. So I gauge swatch for this and I had the like smaller needle, but I was like, this isn't, this isn't big enough to make a top, even a little summer top, like this isn't big enough. So then I was so, I just always get so surprised. I'm like, what do you mean I don't have that needle? But I like never knit with lace weight needles. I recently started buying when I need a lace needle. These are the Chiago, Chiago. I just Googled it. Google says Chiago. I've been buying the Chiago needles recently instead of like the really cheap ones. And they are so nice. You can tell they're just high quality. So I, anytime I've been needing a lace needle recently, I've just been buying it from them and I love them. So twist loop top, I'm very, very excited. I finished the Ghost Whisperer top and the Strata top like within a day or two of each other. And then I blocked them and then I just had my socks. And I don't know if this happens to anybody else, but I'll get like cast on anxiety. I don't think that's really a thing. I've just made that up. But I finished and I was like, I don't know what to cast on. I don't know which thing to start. And then I was like, sometimes I just want to, I just want to like sit down and be like, have an easy thing to knit. And then, but it's a lot of work starting a garment and then like making sure that I'm actually going to make the right size. Cause like, what if I was really bloated when I measured myself when I ordered yarn or then I was getting really anxious. And so then I just started one top and then I started another one right after it. So, I mean, that doesn't really make any sense, but I basically had a probably like two or three days where I just had my sock and I didn't really knit that much. And instead I just kind of clicked around Ravelry and caked up some yarn. And, and that was, that was it. Cast on anxiety, anyone else? Just me? Let me know. I do have a couple of acquisitions. I usually, I don't even know. I, I was about to say, I usually don't buy much yarn. That's a blatant lie. 
don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. My acquisitions. Since I'm into socks now, I bought the Long Dog Yarn, the Princess Bride order. There's cat hair on it. This is the sock set of Only Mostly Dead, which I only mostly picked because of the quote and then also the color. I really liked it. I don't know if you can see. It's really nice. It's got, it's mostly, it's maroon with some tan bits and some brown bits. Kind of pinkish back here. And then a little mini skein of tan contrast. This is, what is this? This is the Merino sock set. It's 75% superwash Merino, 25% nylon. So hoping to get a nice pair of socks out of this. Not, not now, not anytime soon, just at some point. This is my first time ordering from them. I mean, I love all of her yarns, but obviously like hand dyed yarn is very expensive and I'm a student, so I don't have a ton of money, at least right now when I'm not making any money and I'm just living on like student loans. I don't really, I can't really justify buying a ton of hand dyed yarn enough to make a garment or a sweater. And I've only recently become a sock girl so now that I'm a sock girl, I can justify buying hand dyed yarn in small quantities for socks. I love long dog yarn. I love all of her dye lots. I love all of her collections. And also, I don't know if you could tell, but my dog, Mary Jane, looks like a really big wiener dog. So the long dog yarn, it just reminds me of her. So I've always loved this yarn. I've just never bought any before. So I'm so happy that I bought this and I love The Princess Bride. It's one of my favorite movies. I rewatched it like the night before the pre-order went live. It was just fun to watch and it's fun. I'm excited to have a Princess Bride pair of socks from Long Dog Yarn. So that's acquisition number one. And then I also, I bought a lot of yarn from Knitting for Olive to make my new summer garments with, not for stashed yarn. This um, Merino and Cloud that I'm using for the twist loop top was part of that order. So like, we'll kind of count it as an acquisition, but I already talked about it. So that's all the time it gets. I have three other. I bought more Knitting for Olive Merino. This is Thunder Cloud. It's, kind, it's a heathered gray. It's very pretty. I think it's funny. I didn't notice until the yarn arrived that I bought Cloud and Thundercloud. I just think that's kind of funny. This, I bought, I think, four skeins of this. This I will use to make a Harvest Tea by Ozetta. I have one already, also knit and knitting for Olive, that I will make this year. I'm very excited about it. I love this pattern. I love this designer. Great things are planned for you. This is my, so my knitting for Olive, Merino and Thundercloud. And then I have more Merino in Dark Cognac. It's a beautiful color. It's a warm, it's a warm neutral brown. I am going to make the camisole number five from my favorite things knitwear at some point. The, the twist loop top, the harvest tea and camisole number five. I've swatched for both of these already and I've made two harvest teas before. So I know what needles I need and the twist loop top, harvest tea, camisole number five all need the same needle. They all need the three millimeter US two and a half needle. And as I mentioned before, I just had to buy one. So I only have one. So none of these projects will be running at the same time because they all require this needle. So we'll just, we'll just crank them out one right after the other <laughs> at some point. But I'm excited to make the camisole number five. I've never made anything from my favorite things network before. I've, this top has been on my in my queue for a while and I'm finally excited to finally make it. And then my last acquisition, this is Knitting for Olive. This is pure silk in the color Hokkaido, which is just a bright orange. It's just a bright ass orange. I love bright orange. I, I have a ton of yarn that's bright orange. I love it. The college I went to, the colors were orange. So I already own a lot of orange and I'm already like sentimental towards orange. And I just keep buying bright orange because it's just a fun, bright color. And I love it. It's fun to wear. I'm going to make the Malides top or the Miladies top. I don't know how to say it. By Inez Oliveira from Bird Knit. I'm excited to make this. I started this top last year with knitting for olive, merino and soft silk mohair. 
I don't know what was going through my mind when I used mohair to make a summer top. But I, I don't know, I knit a couple of inches of the body and was like, this? This is not going to be nice to put on on a summer day. So like, why am I making this? So then I just stopped and I unraveled it. So then I bought this pure silk to make a bright orange Malid's top. And I'm so excited to make it. Plus I've been looking at the color Hokkaido for so long. I've always wanted to buy this color in any of the yarn in the pure silk or the mohair or the merino. And I just haven't. And so I was looking at the pure silk. There aren't as many colors for the pure silk as there are for the merino or the soft silk mohair. And I think they just added this to their pure silk colors. And I was like, perfect. I'll make a fun, make a fun Malid's top with it. So this, I'll start this top at some point. It is very intimidating. If you've watched any knitting video about it or looked at the pattern or anything, it is an incredibly, incredibly intimidating. Well, for me, it's intimidating. So I am kind of scared to start it and to make it. And you have to take a ton of measurements of yourself first. I am going to swatch for this. Don't worry, guys. This is something to swatch for. I will swatch for this. Don't worry about me for that one. I'm on it. So yeah, that is all I have for today. Those are all of my important and not important life updates and thoughts about things going on and my finished objects and my whips and my acquisitions. You met my dog. You didn't meet the other cat. She's around somewhere. But yeah, that's that's it. Hope you enjoyed my second podcast. They're fun to make. I'm going to keep making them even if people don't watch them because this is a lot of fun for me. I hope everyone enjoys the early parts of summer. I'm going to keep making all of my summer tops and I can't wait to see what everybody else makes for summer. And don't wear a fully mohair top in the summer, even if it's in your house and be sweating for an entire video. All right. So thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you next time. Bye.